Again, I'm telling what is an interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentence always ask a question and it ends with a question mark. Let's see example. Here we have written in the first affirmative sentence that Moni is a good player. Here, example is, isn't Bonnie a good player at the end? Question mark. In the affirmative sentence, we have written that sandwich was not tasty. It is negative in meaning. So we will omit the negative form in here. So the verb is old, come fast, be verb, then old the sandwich tasty at the end, question mark. Okay. Here, one thing, we have to remember that when we change assertive sentence into interrogative sentence, if the assertive sentence is affirmative, then the interrogative sentence will be negative. And if the assertive sentence is negative, in that case, the interrogative sentence will be affirmative. Okay, now we learn how to change a certain sentence into an interrogative sentence. Rule 1. If we want to change the affirmative assertive sentence with to be verb without changing meaning into interrogative, then the structure will be to be verb. Plus not plus subject plus rest of the sentence and at the end to so question mark. Okay? The structure will be to be verb plus not plus subject plus rest first of the sentence plus question mark. Let's see an example. Example is Shanu is a good student. So according to that structure here, yeah, Shanu is verb, is is to be verb, and good students is extension. Shanu is subject, is is verb, and extension are rest part of the sentence. So according to the sentence, to be verb will be comfort. To be verb, in, in sense of indirect sentence, to be verb, I, S, plus not, so is it? Then subject is Shamu. Then extension or rest part of the sentence a good student. And at last question mark. So what is the interpretive sentence? The interpretive sentence will be is it Shamu a good student? This is according to the rule 1. Let's come rule 2. In rule 2, if the sentence is negative, then we have to omit the negative particles. When we change the assertive sentence into negative. Let's see an example. The Lady owes not fair. Here the lady is the subject 
all this river, various extension, and notice maybe vertical here. So according to the rule, we will have to omit the negative verticals when we will change these assertive sentences into interrogative. So let's do interrogative. Beaver will become first, so O's will become first, O's. We will have to omit the negative verticals, so no need to write not. Then the subject. The lady and extension fear. At the end of the sentence, question mark. So what will be the interpretive? The interpretive will be all oh, the lady fear question mark. Now let's see rule three. Rule three for assertive sentence without auxiliary verb for Assertive sentence without a sleeper. If we want to make it interrogative, at first we have to put don't, doesn't, didn't according to the tense, then subject plus principal verb P1, that means P1 means present form, plus the rest of the sentence after principal verb. Plus question mark. I'm telling it. We will have to put don't, didn't, doesn't according to the tense, then subject, then principal verb P1, then rest of the sentences after principal verb and at the end of question mark. Let's see an example. Let's see an example according to the rule 3. He had the frog. Here, what is the subject? He help is help verb and the frog is extension. Help is here principal verb. Help is here principal verb. So according to the rule, we will have to write don't, doesn't, didn't according to the sentence. Though this sentence is past in sense, so we will take help of the verb didn't. Did and then subject he. Then according to the structure, principal verb P1, that means present form. Help is past. Help is the present form of help. Didn't he help? Then extend a uh, part of the sentences after principal verb, the quote. And at the end of the sentence, question mark. So the interview sentence is, didn't still help the four. This is according to the rule three. Now come to rule four. Rule four what say? Rule four says that if it is found never and nothing in assertive sentence, to make it interrogative, we have to use ever. We have to use ever instead of ever and Anything instead of nothing. I'm telling you again. If we found the word a never and nothing in assertive sentence, why we will make it interrogative? We'll have to write ever instead of never and anything instead of nothing. Let's see an example. Example is as if as if never tells a lie. As if never tells a lie. Here, as if is subject, 
never and tell a lie. So here never will have to use ever instead of never. Let's see. Here we have to use the ugly verb that is because this is a third person singular number. Now then, then the subject as if doesn't as if we have to use either instead of never doesn't as if either tell a lie at the end question mark. So the interpretive sentence is does does as if ever tell a lie. Does as if ever tell a lie. Let's know about rule five. Rule five says that if we get all, everyone, everybody in assertive sentence to change it interrogative, we have to use who instead of all, everyone, and everybody. Then, don't, doesn't, didn't. Then, principal verb, be one. Then, rest of the sentences after principal verb and at the end, question mark. So, I'm telling you, instead, <coughs> we will have to use who instead of all, everyone, everybody. Then, don't, doesn't, didn't. Then principal verb P1. Then rest of the sentences after principal verb plus question mark. Let's see an example. Example is everyone came to see me. Here the sentence starts with everyone. So in, in case of interrogative, we will write or use who. Who instead of everyone. Who. Let's see. The verb is in first form. So we will use a technical of the verb of past. Who did it? Then this is the verb, principal verb, principal verb P1. Come is present form of K. Who did come to? Then the next part of the principal verb to see me. To see me. And at the end of the sentence, question mark. So, the interpretive sentence will be, Who didn't come to see me? Now, come to rule 6. When we will get none, no one, nobody in assertive sentence, then to make it interpretive, we have to write in it who instead of this. This means none, no one, and nobody. Plus extension plus question mark. Let's see an example. No one can do this. Some. No one can do this sum. So according to the rule, we will use who, in case of interpretive, we will use who instead of no one. Who, then extension, that means can do the sum. Can do the sum at the 
end of the sentence question mark. No one can do the sum. We use here who instead of no one, then we have the extension and at the end of question mark. One thing in case of interrogative, you will have to give question mark or interrogation mark at the end of the sentence. So dear students, that is all. Thank you for enjoying this video. Goodbye.